Hi friends and welcome back to House Church. My name is Pastor Ethan and I'm excited that you continue to be a part of this very important ministry. A ministry that we began as part of the process to ease back together um, after we've spent a number of weeks away from in-person worship. But I want to remind you that House Church is created and set up to continue even beyond this season. We really hope that you are connecting with your House Church family, that you're learning a lot about one another, that you're having fun, that you're laughing, and that you continue to meet. Uh, but I do want to remind you that on June 28th, Sunday, June 28th, um, is when we are gathering back together for the very first time in a long time. It's kind of like our church family homecoming as we will have one service at 10 a.m. on Sunday, June 28th. We'll be outside under a big tent in the parking lot. And so we sure hope that you will join us for that, um, that homecoming service as we finally get back together. Now we are, are going to make it a point to create space for social distancing and do everything we can to keep people safe. I'll talk more about that through emails and other videos, so keep an eye out for that information. But I wanted to remind you, June 28th, we'll be back on campus for in-person worship at 10 a.m. But right now, I'd like to jump into this series that we started a few weeks ago, and we're going to finish tonight. And so this series has taken us through um, just a couple points or uh, ideas of what it means to engage the Holy Trinity. We started by talking about what it means to be embraced by God. And we talked about Luke chapter 15, where the prodigal son is, and how important that embrace by God is for our lives and the call upon us to embrace him back. Now, last week for House Church, we talked about what it means to be empowered by the Spirit. To be empowered by the Spirit. And we, we kind of related that to the, the engine that allows us to continue to be Christ followers in the world today. We talked about diagnostics. We talked about what it means to be running well and honoring this power because there is nothing more powerful than the Holy Spirit in our lives and in the world around us. Well, this week we're going to talk about being employed by Christ. In this scripture verse from 2 Corinthians, we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. Now that scripture verse in 2 Corinthians can be kind of confusing. So I, wanna, I just want to spend a few minutes, some time talking about what exactly it means to be employed by Christ. So let's talk about it. Really, when we hear that word employed, we, we get this idea that we should receive some type of payment, right? If, if you have a job, you fully expect to work that job and to get paid after you've worked that job to make sure that there is some form of compensation. And there are times in our life as a Christ follower in which we think the same way of what do we get out of this Christ followship, right? What do we get out of being a Christian? What does it truly mean to be employed by Christ? Where's the payment come in? That may sound like a, a silly question, but there are seasons and times in our lives when we actually ask ourselves the question, is it really worth it? And for those moments of despair, those moments of question, those moments even of depression, I, I want to offer a few scripture verses. Well, one scripture verse, to be honest with you. I want to look at Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. Here's what those scripture says. You were dead because of your sins and because of your sinful nature. I'm sorry. You were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all your sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us, our debt, and took it away by nailing it at the cross. Just take a minute and let that sink in. Basically what Paul is telling us is that Christ took all of our sin with him to the cross. All of the things that we had done in our lives, past, present, and future, all the levels of stupidity, all the mistakes, all of the stuff that separated us from God, Christ took to the cross, and it was nailed there, and it died with him. These charges against us. Now, I, I call that our debt, because we 
have a huge debt to God because, friends, we don't live perfect lives. We, on a daily basis, do things that create separation or potential separation between us and God. But Christ, the masterful plan of salvation, when he went to the cross, he paid that debt in full. And so what we have to realize is that by being employed by Christ, we've been paid up front. Because Christ died on that cross, and I fully believe that when he died on that cross, in those moments of, of sheer agony, pain, and difficulty, I believe he thought of you, and he thought of me, and he thought of every single person in this world. And he made the conscious decision to die for our sin and our stupidity. And so we have been paid up front in what it means to be employed by Christ, to live as Christ followers, to continue to carry the mission and the vision that God has placed on our lives, to share our gifts, and all that is encompassing of what it means to be a Christ follower and a servant of God. Now, what I also want you to realize is that we continue to experience the benefits every day of our earthly lives. It isn't a matter or just a matter of Christ dying on the cross for our sins to pay our debt. It is the reality that when we live in to that calling as Christ followers, Christ continues to bring joy and happiness and purpose and direction into our everyday lives. The way in which we interact with one another, the way in which he blesses us and opens up doors and opportunities, we receive the benefit. Even though our complete salary of what it means to be a Christ follower has already been paid to us up front, every single day we reap the benefits. And then, of course, the ultimate gift, the bonus, if you will, is eternal life. Maybe even our retirement plan, we could call it that eternal life in the kingdom of God with all of the saints, where there is no pain, there is no crying, there is no agony. It is perfection. This sounds like a, an awesome plan. We get paid fully up front through Christ's sacrifice. We get benefits as we continue to live into the call as Christ followers. And our retirement plan for the kingdom of God is, is unmatched by anything else. This is is what God has invited us. This is how God has invested in us. And this is where he calls us to be. I realize oftentimes we don't always think of it from that perspective. There are times in which we don't even think of it at all. And so I want to get very specific about that role that God calls us into. The position we've been asked to fill is defined by Paul in, in 2 Corinthians there, when he says that we are Christ's ambassadors. An ambassador. That scripture verse says, we are Christ's ambassadors. And God is making his appeal through us. There is not a, a single one of us who can get out of that job responsibility. You have been asked to be an ambassador for Christ because God sees in you the opportunity to make his appeal to the world through your life and the way that you represent Jesus Christ. And that's really what an ambassador is because by definition, an ambassador is a representative to a foreign country. An ambassador is a representative to a foreign country. So what you are doing is representing Jesus Christ. Now, where's the foreign country? As a Christ follower, we are reminded that we are not here. This is not our home. We are simply living in this space and in this place until God calls us home or Christ's second return. So we are foreigners living in this land, living in this world, because as people who confess and believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, our home is in the kingdom of God. Our home is in the heavens. But while we are here on earth, we are called to be Christ's ambassadors, which means we are representing Jesus in a foreign land, in a foreign country, in this world. Think about what that means for a moment. To be placed here, specifically as a Christ follower, because God knows that you are going to have an opportunity to represent Jesus Christ, his love, his gift, grace, salvation, into the world around you. Every single day, 
That is who we are called to be. You are called to represent Christ in the world. You are called to represent Christ in the world. One more time, because I want that to sink in. You are called to represent Christ in the world. If we were to pause right there, and we were to think about our lives, maybe even just the last 24 or 48 hours, if you were to ask yourself the question, how are you representing Christ in the world? Are you doing a good job? Or are you failing miserably? How are you representing Christ in the world? And I want, I want to real briefly highlight three ways that we live that out, that we live into that call. For we represent Christ to the world by the way in which we live, by the way in which we live, by the choices we make every single day, by the, the manner in which we walk, by the manner in which we try to avoid sin and, and try to avoid the stumbles in the world around us, the, the righteousness and the holiness God calls us into. That is how we represent Jesus Christ in the world. And I'm not saying we have to be perfect at it, but we have to be reminded on a regular basis, or, or maybe I should just speak for myself, I have to be reminded on a regular basis that my job and my responsibility is to represent Jesus Christ with my life. And so every single person I come into contact with should be able to look at my life and know whether or not I'm a Christ follower. Know whether or not I'm representing Jesus. Because if you are not representing Jesus with your life, then you're representing someone or something else. And so we rep Christ by the way in which we live our life on a daily basis. And we are called into righteousness and holiness. We also represent Christ to the world by the way in which we love. Now, I know the, the, the manner in which we love has been highlighted a lot over the last few weeks, especially with the racial injustice conversations that have been having, but I cannot express this enough. Too often, we as Christ followers have, been, have uh, interpreted the commandment to love one another, but we've interpreted in a way that simply tells us that we shouldn't hate somebody else. And, and we think that that is enough. As long as we don't hate anybody, it's okay. God's commandment upon our lives is not don't hate someone. God's commandment upon our lives is to love them. And I would go even further than that, and I would say you are not fulfilling the commandment to love others unless they know and feel that love. And so it takes a proactive approach. See, simply not to hate somebody that's a passive approach to what it means to be a Christ follower. Friends, there is never anything about this job and this responsibility that is passive when it comes to being a Christ follower. No, we are called to be active. And as an active Christ follower, we make sure that we love in a way that people know and see and experience that love. No one is excluded from that love. No one based on race or sexual orientation or country of origin. No one is excluded based on their past mistakes or their future mistakes. We're just simply called to love. And if we don't represent Jesus Christ with our love, then we are misrepresenting his love. If you call yourself a Christ follower and are not active in your love for one another, then you are misrepresenting the love and grace of Christ. And finally, that we are called to represent Christ in the world by the way in which we learn. And see, I think this is built in, this idea of grace and devotion and dedication, discipleship, if you will. It's built in because we are constantly called to grow and learn as Christ followers. We need to understand what it means to grow and develop as God's people. And so we're not going to have it perfect. Actually, we're not going to have it perfect at any stage of our lives. That's why there is grace. The motivation and the push to continue to do our job well requires us to continue to learn by praying and scripture reading and connecting with other disciples of and continuing to mature as a Christ follower. 
And so we represent Christ in the world because we say, honestly, that we don't have it all figured out. But in saying that we don't have it all figured out, we dedicate ourselves to learning and growing as disciples. And so again, as we represent Christ into the world, we must make sure that we are doing so by the way in which we live, by the way in which we love, and by the way in which we learn. The bottom line, friends, is that our job as Christ followers is to make sure that when people encounter us, they encounter Jesus Christ. That's what it means to be an ambassador of Christ. That's what it means that God is making his appeal through you. That we all have this responsibility to live for Jesus. We have this responsibility to represent Jesus out into the world. We have this responsibility to make sure people hear the voice of God when they encounter us. Now that may feel like a lot of pressure, and to be quite frank, it is. But remember, you've already been paid up front through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. As Christ followers, as we continue to live, love, and learn, we reap the benefits of what it means to be with God every single day. And that retirement plan of the kingdom of God, heaven, perfection, and glory is right there. All of this God has laid before us as his ambassadors to represent Jesus in this foreign country we call the world until he calls us home. And I've got to be honest with you. To represent Jesus, our Savior, is humbling, honoring, and horrifying all at the same time. It's humbling because when I think about my own life, I know that I am going to make a mistake and I am far from ready or far from worthy to represent Jesus Christ to the world, and yet he has still called me to do so. Honoring because there is no better person to represent than Jesus Christ. There is no better or gooder or greater cause, right, than Jesus Christ and the salvation of the world, the forgiveness of sins and the grace that he offers. There is nothing better to represent and work toward than the power of Jesus in the world around us. And that is humbling to think I have a responsibility and an opportunity to do that. And it's horrifying because in the midst of all of that, I realize I am going to fall short. But in the midst of me knowing that I'm going to fall short, God knew I was going to fall short, and yet the call is still placed on my life to represent him. And so it is, it is horrifying because I don't want to let him down. Through his love and through his grace and everything he has poured into me, I don't want to let him down. And every day I wake up scared that I'm going to do that. And someone, someone's going to miss the opportunity to know Jesus because I, I just didn't have it going on that day. Now, God's grace calls that. But through all of those pieces, we have to realize how important it is not simply to accept Jesus Christ and say thanks and so long, but to know that we are employed by Christ as his people. And so the question that we must continue to think about and pray about is are you ready and willing to accept the job? Are you ready and willing to accept the job? Because if we accept the grace of God, if we accept the forgiveness of our sins, if we accept the promise of eternal life, friends, we are dedicating our life to the work of Jesus. There is a world out there that needs to see Jesus. And the only way that they're going to do so is through you. The only way some of the people in this world will ever see and experience Jesus is because you are being an ambassador for Christ and God is making his appeal through you. So are you ready and willing to accept that most important job? Let me pray for us. Father, I give you thanks for your continued call upon our lives, and I pray, God, that we may continue to recognize how important it is to represent you into the world. Forgive us for those moments in which we have failed. 
Thank you that your spirit continues to enlighten us and help us see the areas in our lives in which we have misstepped or made mistakes. For the grace that picks us back up and reminds us that you are continually calling us to serve you and that you are making that appeal for people to come to you through us. I pray that you continue to equip us, encourage us, and empower us to be yours. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, friends, thank you for being with us this morning or this evening. Thank you for being at House Church. And I hope you've gotten something out of this series. But even more important than these videos have been the conversation and the discussions that you've had with your House Church family. And I hope tonight's a good one as well. Take care and God bless.